All right, let's begin notes day two on 6.1, I can use exponent properties. Um, okay, the first concepts we're gonna be covering today is the power of a product property, which says that if you have two numbers multiplying to an exponent, you can write that as each individual factor with the exponent and then find the product. That was a little confusing. Let's show you an example of why. If I have, we'll, we'll use their example, three times two, we'll just say to the power of three. <laughs> um, this property says that I can write that as three to the power of three times two to the power of three. Well, let's see if it works. I know three times two is six, so this should say six to the power of three equals three to the power of three times two to the power of three. Um, I know three to the power of three or three times three times three is 27. And I know two to the power of three or two times two times two is eight. So now let's check this in our handy dandy calculators. If I type six times six times six, I'm going to get 216, which is the same thing as 27 times eight. So, it works. All right, next property we're going to cover is the power of a quotient property, um, which says the same thing, but this time we're using division instead of multiplication. So if I have two numbers dividing to an exponent, it is the same thing as writing the dividend and divisor to that exponent. Um, so let's just see if this one works. We'll use three and two again and to the power of three. So three over two to the power of three should be the same as three to the power of three over two to the power of three. Well, I know three divided by two is one and a half. So I'm gonna write this as 1.5 to the power of three. And then three to the power of three, we already said was 27. Two to the power of three is eight. I'm gonna move up here because I'm running out of room. Um, so now we're going to use our handy dandy calculator and do 1.5 times 1.5 times 1.5 and we should get 3.375 or 3 and 3 eighths and then if we do 27 divided by 8 well by simplifying that fraction I already know I have 3 and 3 eighths but if I do it in my calculator I get the decimal 3.375 and those are the same. So what's important to have in your notes here? Um, if you want to have the examples, that's a good thing to have in your notes. The important thing to have in your notes for today is actually these properties. So I would write the number example because our brains make the connection better when we see the example. Um, and then if it helps you to write the algebra example as well, that's fine. All right, so when we apply this, we're actually gonna use it to simplify the numbers in an expression and keep the variables. So using that product of a power property, um, if I have negative 1.5 times y to the power of two, this should be the same as negative 1.5 to the power of two times y to the power of two. Now I can simplify that number side. Um, negative 1.5 times negative 1.5 should be 2.25 and then we keep the y the same. So that is our answer. All right, uh, 3d over two to the power of four should be the same as three to the power of four, d to the power of four over two to the power of four. We just distributed that exponent of four to every single term. Um, three to the power of four is 81. Uh, remember that's three times three times three times three, so. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. Um, d to the power of 4, I can't simplify that because I don't know what d is. And then 2 to the power of 4 is 16. And I can't simplify 81 over 16 any further because they don't have common factors. So there's our answer. Um, all right, pause the video, see if you can do c and d on your own, and then play it back to see if you got it right. All right, c is going to be a to the power of 3 over negative 10 
to the power of three, which is gonna be a to the power of three over negative 1,000. That negative does stay there because it's an odd exponent. And then this bottom one, hopefully you caught the negative exponent. Um, we did talk about it in the Google Meet. Um, but when you have a negative exponent, you can actually flip that fraction and then make it a positive exponent. So this is the same thing as three over two X. So I flip the fraction to the reciprocal and then we can make it a positive exponent. So when it's a negative exponent, you can flip the fraction and make it a positive exponent. Now I can distribute that exponent. So I have three to the power of five over two to the power of five X to the power of five which can be simplified 243 over 32 X to the power of five. All right, before we begin the application of the power of a product property, um, we need to know a little bit about scientific notation. Um, eighth graders, if you haven't started this unit in science class yet, you will very soon. Um, this is a very applicable math concept if you plan on going into fields of astrology, or physics, or um, engineering, mechanics, chemical engineer. Um, scientific notation is a way to exp express a really big or a really small number with only one or more digits. So what is scientific notation? It is a number, whoops, a number between one and 10. So really what that means is there's one digit before a decimal. So this could be 1.0, it could also be 9.5, or anything in between. Um, it can't be bigger than 10, and it can't be less than one. So there has to be one digit before a decimal, and then times 10 to an exponent. That exponent, it says here it must be an integer. What that means is a positive negative whole number. So 10 to a negative whole number or a positive whole number. So you'll see up here we have 45,000. Um, when you're multiplying 45,000 by other hundreds of thousands, it gets a little long to write. So we can express 45,000 as 4.5 times 10 to the power of 4. How do we get that number? 45,000, there's a decimal here. I move the decimal place over 1, 2, 3, 4 to get that one digit before the decimal. And that's where my 4 comes from. Um, 7.6 times 10 to the negative 4, so now we're going negative. Um, this one I actually have to write out, <laughs> and then we move the decimal four places, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and we get 0. 0.00076, so that's where that negative 4 comes from. Um, if we started with this side and we're converting, then we just move the decimal place over, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we still get negative four. Um, when it's a really small number that you're representing in scientific notation, it's a negative exponent, because remember, negative exponents are really like fractions. Um, and then when it's a really big number, it's gonna be a positive exponent, because that's a lot of tens that you multiply by. All right, so real quick before we get into um, operating with scientific notation, Let's just practice converting from scientific notation. If I have 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5, and when I'm converting, I'm converting between the really big or really small number and the scientific notation. So you'll notice these four are in scientific notation. I'm going to practice converting them into either a really big or really small number. And then these two, one is really big, one is really small, we're going to convert those to scientific notation. Okay, so 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. When I'm multiplying by a positive exponent, I start by writing my 1.2, and then I move my decimal place to the right because it's a positive exponent, so I'm making the number bigger, and I move it the number of places that the exponent will tell us to. So it's 10 to the power of five. I'm gonna move the decimal five places. So let's count one, two, three, four, five. Um, I do these little bubbles because it's it's like a placeholder. So now I can add zeros there. My decimal goes there. And 1.2 times 10 to the fifth is 120,000. So 120,000. 
All right, 3.06 times 10 to the 4. Again, it's positive, so I'm moving my decimal place to the right. I'm making the number bigger. Um, so we count 1, 2, 3, 4, add two zeros, or this is 30,600. All right, so now I'm multiplying by a negative exponent, so I'm going to make the number smaller, which means I'm moving the decimal to the left. So I'm going to start with 7.2, give, my give myself some space to write these placeholders, and I'm going to move the decimal six places to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, I have five zeros there. So or 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 2. All right, last one, 2.04 times 10 to the negative seventh. Um, again, I'm going to give myself some room to write my placeholders. I'm going to move it seven places to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six zeros before the two and the four. That's a zero four. <laughs> All right, and so now let's practice converting to scientific notation. Um, this is a really big number, 430,000, so I'm gonna have a positive exponent. And imagine a decimal place there, and it moves over one, two, three, four, five decimal places. So we're going to say that's 4.3 times 10 to the fifth. And then this is a really small number, so it's going to be a negative exponent. I need to get my decimal right here, which makes, means it moves over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to be 8.7 times 10 to the negative seven. All right, let's start operating with scientific notation. Um, okay, so remember the power of a product property says that if you have A times B, two numbers, to an exponent, it's the same thing as A to that exponent times B to that exponent. A and B are just variables. In our example, we had two and three, um, but they could be any numbers. So when I have two times 10 to the negative two, times 3.1 times 10 to the power of 6. These are both in scientific notation, by the way. Um, we'll talk more about what scientific notation is in the Google Meet. Um, but basically, it's just a way to express really big or really small numbers because 2 to the power, or 2 times 10 to the power of negative 2 is going to be 2 times 1 over 100, or 2 divided by 100, which is 0 0.02. So we'll talk more about scientific notation and how to express that in the Google Meet. All right, so what I can do with these numbers is I can multiply the 2 times 3.1, and then I can multiply 10 to the power of negative 2 times 10 to the power of 6. So 2 times 3.1 is going to be 6.2. And then I can add those exponents on the 10 because they have the same base. And negative 2 plus 6, or 6 minus 2, is 4. So when we write our answer in scientific notation, we have one digit before the decimal, and then we have 10 in an exponent. So 6.2 times 10 to the power of 4 is in scientific notation. Okay, so now for example B, when we're dividing, um, I can take 1.3 divided by 2 and multiply it by 10 to the power of negative 2 time divided by 10 to the power of negative 6. So 1.3 divided by 2, we're going to use our handy dandy calculator, and that is going to be 0.65. And then times, we can subtract the exponents of the 10 because they have the same base, so negative 2 minus negative 6. Minus negative six becomes plus six. Negative two plus six is gonna be 10 to the power of four. But this is not in scientific notation because scientific notation says that there has to be one number before the decimal and zero does not count. So we're going to move the decimal over one place. So now I have 6.5. And because I multiply that by 10, 
I have to take away one number from my exponent. Um, this part always confuses me a little bit, so if you want to multiply these out to double check, that would be a good idea. So 0.65 times 10 to the power of 4, when we multiply that by, you know, 10 with four zeros, we move the decimal place, 4, to the right. So let's see, 0.65, 1, 2, 3, 4, would be 6,500. Now if we multiply 6.5 times 10 to the 3 out, 1, 2, 3 is 6,500. So we're good. Our answer is 6.5 times 10 to the power of 3. And we're going to skip this page. All right, so this chart reviews the notes from day one and day two, just kind of summarizes all of the um, properties for us. We also did a graphic, X, graphic organizer on the first day, which has most of these, um, and that gives some nicer examples. Um, but if you want to screenshot this, this is a really good thing to use on tests. All right, and some summary questions. Why are zero exponents equal to one? Well, if we follow the pattern, positive exponents, um, when we decrease towards zero, we're dividing by the base. Um, so when I have two to the power of one, I have two, and I divide by two, two to the power of zero is one. Um, explain how negative exponents become fractions when simplified. Um, well, that's the same kind of concept. We follow the pattern. So if I have two to the power of two, four, two to the power of one is two, two to the power of zero is one. And then when I have a negative exponent, I divide by two and I get a fraction. So it's all following a pattern. Um, what are the properties of exponents? You don't have to write them all out again. They should be in that chart on the last page or in the graphic organizer we did on day one. Um, how do you simplify an expression using the properties of exponents? Well, you use all the properties and simplify. <laughs> and how are you going to remember each of the five properties? Again, I would really reference that chart. So the chart that we either did on day one, the graphic organizer, or the chart on the last page. All of those five properties are important to know.